Good morning, friends. I bring you greetings from Kalamazoo College. It is um, great to be back in your pulpit again this morning. Um, you seem to always land on me after major news about Roe v. Wade has broken. <laughs> so um, I think we all are waiting to hear what the Spirit has to say to us this morning. I've chosen, I'm going to read the Galatian scripture out of the New Revised Standard Version, the NRSV version of the Bible, instead of the inclusive version. The NRSV version has a little more edge to it, and I think it's called for this morning. So um, please listen to hear what the Spirit of the Lord says to us today. Our scripture reading comes from Galatians chapter 5. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore. Do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, Take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and I do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels. Quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you. As I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. I asked God if it was okay to be melodramatic, and she said, yes. I asked her if it was okay to be short, and she said, it sure is. I asked her if I could wear nail polish or not wear nail polish, and she said, honey, she calls me that sometimes, she said, you can do just exactly what you want. Thanks, God, I said. And is it even okay to paragraph my letters? Sweet cakes, God said. Who knows where she picked that up. What I'm telling you is yes, yes, yes. We used this poem in our baccalaureate service this year at the college, God Says Yes to Me, by Kaylin Hout. I love this poem because for those of us who grew up in more restrictive forms of Christianity, this poem offers a little fresh air. You can be who you are. God says yes to you. I grew up in a small conservative town where it felt like there was very little wiggle room around what was considered goodness. Good people didn't have tattoos. Good people didn't wear a lot of makeup. Good women didn't wear a lot of makeup. But confusingly, they definitely wore some makeup because to not wear any makeup might signal a lack of femininity, and that would not be good, would not be good either. <laughs> the circumscribed white middle-class ethics that I grew up around were everywhere, rarely spoken, and always felt. It was confusing for me especially 
someone who wanted to be good, who wanted to love God, when I found myself on the other side of those unspoken codes. In Kaylin Hout's words, I asked her if I could wear nail polish or not wear nail polish. And she said, honey, she calls me that sometimes, you can do just exactly what you want to do. Part of what the early church was trying to figure out was what do you have to do? Who do you have to be to be a Christian? Do you have to follow kosher laws? Do you have to be born from a certain type of family? Do you have to follow conversion practices like circumcision? The early Christians wrestled with these questions and we live with their answers. No, you don't have to convert to Judaism first. Yes, you are allowed to eat whatever foods you want to eat. No, you don't have to be born to a particular ethnic group. When we talk about freedom as Christians, this is what we're pointing at. There are no rules laying out who is in and who is out. The only thing you need to do to be a Christian is to follow Christ. That's it. That's the whole ball game. You have freedom. God says yes to you. But lest that seem easy, I'll refer you to today's scripture readings. In our first scripture, Jesus is talking to would-be followers, and they say, Jesus, I'm coming, I am here, I'm ready to follow you in just a minute. I have these few important other things that I need to finish. I need to go home and say goodbye to my family first. Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. To our ears, Jesus sounds harsh. If you're going to disappear, follow an itinerant preacher, it doesn't seem unreasonable to go home and say goodbye first. And the dead can't actually bury the dead. So going home for a funeral seems like a good idea. These are very reasonable requests. And that's kind of the point. There will always be reasonable excuses to follow Jesus just a little bit later. The gospel makes its demands right now. To be a disciple of Christ, to be a Christian, you must act right now. Not later, not at a reasonable hour, but right this very minute. Our second scripture reading takes us even further, even deeper into our own humanity by forcing us to struggle with the way we negotiate our excuses. To lay the foundation for this, let me use an example out of my own life. I have two daughters, eight and 11, and I'm gonna throw them under the bus a little bit here. We have a rule that there are no screens between breakfast and dinner time. The one exception for this is for school or educational purposes. My kids know the rules, and they're also really good at stretching the rules. Earlier this week, I found one of my children watching a YouTube video, but the YouTube video was, about Nat, was from Nat Geo, and it was all about animals. Her argument, of course, was that the video is educational. She wasn't technically wrong but we all know what the spirit of the law is. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. Yes, we are a free people, able to claim our Christianity despite all the rules that people try to put on us. But don't forget the spirit of that law. That freedom, your freedom, isn't a blank check to do whatever you want. That freedom serves you only to the extent that you first serve Christ. Put another way, just because all things are permitted does not mean that all things are Christ-like. There are no rules telling us who and what we can be and do as Christians 
Unlike our Jewish and Muslim brothers and sisters, we don't have kosher laws or halal laws. We don't have clear categories of what is permitted and not permitted. But that doesn't mean that we live without stricture. We are, aren't accountable to other human beings, but we are most certainly accountable to the Holy Spirit. If you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be led by the Spirit. You can claim freedom in Christ, but that freedom is challenging. The categories of good and bad, in and out, are gone. And now you have to rely on your discernment of the Holy Spirit to know what is right and good. Earlier this year, I sat on a panel at the college, and a student asked if abortion was a sin. I knew what they wanted me to say. They wanted a ruling. They, like so many Americans, wanted a clear line to delineate what is good and what is bad. This is permitted. This is not permitted. But for those of us who are Christians, we simply cannot think in this way. Instead, I answered the student, that all things are contextual, that God calls us through the movement of the Holy Spirit to know what is right and good, and the tools that we are given, the only tool we are given to know the difference between the two is the movement of the Spirit and the fruits that that action produces. Does it lead you to kindness, to gentleness, to patience? to joy. This week, our Supreme Court delineated, eliminated, Supreme Court has eliminated the constitutional rights for all childbearing people. And it seems like a very timely moment to stop and reflect on ethics and the law. And this is the crux of it, people. Right now, there are a lot of people talking very loudly, preaching that abortion is a sin and that Christians are inherently against it. And I am here to say to you that there is no neutral reading of the Bible. That anyone who dares to stand up here and claim the word of God for the people of God, they are responsible for the ethics of that interpretation. Let me be clear, it is the Holy Spirit that leads us to know what is good and acceptable in the eyes of God. Not the Supreme Court, not this pastor, not any preacher, only the movement of the Holy Spirit. Certainly not a minority sect of other Christians who have a lot of rules about who is in and who is out. Christ came to live with us. He became fully human. He lived here in this world that is filled with gray areas. And the tool he gave us to know how to navigate this world is the movement of the Holy Spirit and the fruits that it produces in the lives of those who follow Christ. 
One part of scripture of the Galatians reading that I skipped over this morning is the part we call the golden rule. We all know this. You shall love the neighbor, your neighbor as you love yourself. We rarely recite the second half of that scripture rule. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. We bite at, we tear at, we consume one another. Our weapons in this regard are multitude, and they are often dressed up in righteousness. Sometimes the weapons we wield are our values. I will hit you over the head. I will club you with the rightness of my views. Sometimes our weapons are rules, defining who gets to wear nail polish or not wear nail polish. In the end, no matter what the weapon, we end up biting and devouring one another. To ward against such inhumane behavior, we are given markers of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Our freedom is marked by the characteristics it produces within us. We are free to garner self-control. We are free to love. We are liberated so that we might love and serve. Our closing hymn this morning is an old shaker hymn. Many of us know it, Simple Gifts. It talks of freedom and simplicity. But note that the gift is ours. We don't give it, we receive it. God has given us a gift. And like all good gifts of the Spirit, now we must ask ourselves, what do we do with it? How might we serve the Lord? Will it be with love and peace and kindness and joy? Thanks be to God. Amen. As we get ready for our offering, please remember to fill in your uh, connection card. You can place it in the offering basket. If you don't have time to do that before the offering basket comes, you can place it in the basket on the ends of the, uh, the uh, aisles after the service. God gave us the gifts of a beautiful creation, our talents, and our church and leadership teams. And this morning, we come together to thank God and to offer our gifts so that the ministry of this church will continue to grow and be a blessing to the world. Let us gather our gifts together and offer them to God in gratitude and praise. At this time, the ushers will come forward. They will pass the baskets down. Or they will hold the baskets at the end of the aisle and walk down to you. Please do not take the baskets and pass them down. When the offerings have been collected, the ushers will bring them forward. Thank you.
loving God, we bring before you these gifts. Gifts of our commitment, gifts of our hope. And we dedicate them to your kingdom. Praying that these gifts might be folded into the work that you are doing in and through this church, in our city and in our world. And we pray for eyes open to see the ways that you bring out the fruit of love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and gentleness and self-control through these gifts and all the gifts of ourselves. Amen. You may be seated. In our prayers today, I want to call your attention to the blank page in the bulletin that is available for you to doodle a prayer. When we did this in our youth-led service, a number of people mentioned how much they valued having that opportunity. Um, and so we wanted to continue to offer that space for people to make their prayers into a visual representation in whatever ways are meaningful to you. Let us join our hearts together in prayer. God of love and light, we know that you are with us. You have upheld us, and we know that you continue to sustain us. We give you thanks for sunshine, for flowers that are blossoming and fruit that is growing larger each day and harvests that are beginning. We thank you for fruit that grows right here in our midst, strawberries, the cherries that are coming. And we thank you for the fruit of your spirit in each place that we see it. We pray that your spirit would be moving in each place in our world where there is pain and fear and oppression. We pray for communities in the Ukraine that continue to be affected by the war there and for the families displaced by that conflict who are spread around the globe. We pray for families across the country and in our own city that are grieving the loss of loved ones from gun violence. And we pray for those who are living with greater fear today because they have less freedom to make choices about their own bodies and their own families. On this last Sunday of Pride Tide in June, it is good to remember that we are a community whose ability to find joy and celebrate love in the midst of oppression is a strength. And so we ask for that gift. We ask that through your spirit, we might find freedom to carve out spaces for peace and joy to thrive, for love to blossom. And we pray that you would give us the courage to carve those spaces wider and broader each day so that we can truly be a place of sanctuary, not only for those who've already found our church, but also for those who desperately need the joy and peace and love that we have experienced. 
We pray for those who are ill and injured, that they might know healing. And we pray for all who are grieving, that they might know in you and through our love that they are not alone. We hold all of these prayers before you and continue to pray with confidence as those who are called children of God, the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying together, Our Mother, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Good morning, people of God. I'm obviously not Howard Teachman. Uh, I'm Christopher Schramm, and I am co-chair, along with Jerry Schuler, of the designated senior pastor search team on behalf of this congregation. And we wanted to take an opportunity to share in person with you today what we've been up to uh, in the last two and a half months since we had our first meeting in early April. We have come together at least eight times in person with the awesome responsibility with which you have entrusted us to determine what is God's will and who is God calling to us. We've spent the last two and a half months understanding our role, meeting with our moderators, meeting with the transition team, meeting with Ruth Mordike, the Minister for Search and Call, for the Southwest Association of the Michigan UCC. We are working with urgency, but we are not rushing this process. And I am very excited to share that as of Thursday morning at 8.57 a.m., we submitted our documents to Ruth to post the position for the designated senior pastor here at Kalamazoo First Congregational Church. Ruth is finishing up a vacation, so I haven't heard back from her yet. (laughs) But uh, we um, expect that posting to go live very, very shortly. They can move uh, rather quickly. Um, And then you have to understand that there will sort of be a a blackout period of of new information. Understand that we will be receiving candidate profiles and reviewing them and beginning the interview process. And when there is true information to share, we will share that. But uh, I would also like you to uh, know again the people who make up this team of eight representing this entire congregation and each of you individually. As I mentioned, my co-chair, Jerry Schuler, who is out of town today, but Kim Licavoli, Heidi Oberlin, Bianca Stewart, Joe Schreck, who along with half the people I'm friends with on Facebook was at the Billy Joel concert in South Bend last night. <laughs> Tim Hiscock, and also out of town today, Bob Van Dis. Um, see any of us but uh, with questions but understand that going forward there will not be a lot to share because we are in a very exciting period of time uh, as our team together. Thank you. Thank you Chris and search team. That is an amazing gift they are giving to this congregation. The time and effort and discernment It's really hard work, but I know that team is dedicated 
and uh, have the skill set and uh, will lead us to this new day in this congregation and new leadership at First Congregational Church. Announcements. I'm Howard Teachma, by the way, not Chris. So, <laughs> Friendship in the Garden, following worship at the home, following worship today at the home of Scott Stokes, join your church family for refreshments and fellowship in their beautiful gardens on Lover's Lane. Driving directions are available at the welcome desk. Time to retire the ribbons. Volunteers are needed. I hate to see these things go down, but they must. And uh, they come down a lot easier if we have help. So Wednesday at 6 p.m., if you have some time, come on down here and enjoy our ritual of uh, retiring the ribbons for a time. Opportunity for fun and fellowship. Grab some takeout or pack a picnic and plan to meet in Bronson Park tomorrow, June 27th, that's Monday at 6 p.m., for dinner in Bronson Park. The beautiful altarscape this morning was done by Scott Stokes and complemented by some geraniums donated by Alice Gordon and Dick Hudson. Thank you. The playscape, too, is in an exciting new phase. We had a stream run through it, and now we have an ADA-compliant path run through the playscape. And they are also in a phase of double your money. They have, you can donate to the Playscape, go to their website, KalamazooPlayscape.org, and there's a donate button, and they have a up, they have raised 30,000 of 50,000 that they need to get a 50,000 matching grant. Please help them out if you are able. Last of all, we have an Olympian in our midst. We have an Olympian in our midst. Four gold medals. Julian Borst, can you stand up? <laughs> Julian. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you were way down in Florida running your heart out in the Special Olympics there. And congratulations on those four gold medals, Julian. Thank you. So that is it. Let's continue on in the bulletin. Affirmation of the church together. As members of Christ's body and of one another, unique parts of a beloved whole, we give thanks for this gathering and for the one who gathers us. In our scattering, may we remain together in spirit, reflecting God's love in all we do. Amen. Closing hymn is in the insert in the bulletin. Tis the gift to be simple. Thank you.
this place in peace. Know that you are people of God called to act as God's hands in the world. Be led by the Spirit. Go fearlessly wherever the Spirit calls you. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord be kind and gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor today and every day. Amen.